Well, sir, greetings from Monroeville, Calusi County in the new state of California. I am, sir, your humble servant, William Brown Eyed, a county judge at the current time, but one might be more familiar with my name and what has been called the Great Bear Flag Revolt of June 9, 1846. Therein I was made the commander-in-chief, or if you would, the president of the new Republic of California. But I'm getting ahead of the tale. Perhaps I should provide a little more information about myself and how I came to be in Mexican Alta California in the first place. To Lemuel and Sarah Stone-Eyed, I came into this world in March of 1796 with Rutland, Worcestershire County, Massachusetts being the state of my nativity. And I come from a long line of old New England families. I worked at the carpenter and joiner's trade with my father a greater part of the time until I became of age. And in 1820, I took to wife a wonderful woman by the name of Susan Haskell from another long New England family. And we were to welcome nine children into our family. It was in 1833 that we first embarked on our long journey west, of course, not knowing we would end up on the far western shores of this great land. Although we enjoyed full employment at, the, at my trade in Vermont, yet I had an adventurous turn of mind, which I came quite honestly by, which made me somewhat of a victim of the, at that time, prevailing western fever. My first objective was to move west to Kentucky. And then, with our young family, we packed up and we moved even farther west. We remained about three months, then we moved to Madison, Montgomery County, only eight miles from the wonderful city of Dayton, Ohio. And then in 1839, we again moved to Jackson, Illinois. It was about this period that we became associated with Joseph Smith Jr.'s Church of Christ which is now called the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. It was our pleasure to even be called upon to be a local church leader. Although I don't know any, if there's any church records, I was a believer in and accepted the restored gospel and duly baptized and served as an elder in the church. I was honored to be appointed as a county delegate in the 1844 Presidential Convention it was the delegation's purpose to nominate General Joseph Smith, Jr. as a candidate to the esteemed position of President of these United States. And it was also my pleasure to be involved with the drafting of the platform of that convention. Very Jeffersonian in wording, and I would use some of that in a later document. However, it was after the assassination at Carthage Jail of Brother Joseph in June of that year, I made the decision to gather my family assemble our belongings, purchase appropriate wagons, teams, and cattle, in fact, a very sturdy herd of cattle, and take our leave for the far western territory of the Oregon. We would be known as the Grisby-Eyed Wagon Train. We encountered little in the way of problems or challenges that could not be overcome along the trail and reached Fort Hall, a well-known trading post along the Snake River in the eastern Oregon country. It was there we became acquainted with a rugged mountain man known as Caleb Greenwood. And he convinced us to go south into Alta, California, instead of continuing to Oregon. So the Grisby-eyed party turned southward. Composed of about a hundred souls, and after an arduous crossing of the Sierra, but successful journey, we arrived at Captain John Sutter's settlement, or fort, he called it, uh, in October. Unfortunately, my dear Susan would depart this light, life there shortly thereafter. From there, I removed my motherless family to Peter Lassen's ranchero, building both a cabin and a small uh, sawmill. Uh, later, we moved to the Tome Spread near, Red, near the Red Bluff. It was there that I first became acquainted with an American Army officer by the name of Captain John Fremont, which seemed to be a little out of his own country. It was in June of 1846 that rumors were quickly circulating between the various American settlers that the Mexican government had ordered all non-Mexican citizenry to remove themselves from Alta California. In order to secure our land rights, we were encouraged by the good captain to take some action. And thus we joined with about 30 other Americans 
mountain men and explorers, including that Kit Carson fella, an army scout of some repute, and rode to the military garrison for the Mexicans at the Pueblo of Sonoma, north of San Francisco Bay. As we already related, we were given the opportunity of leadership in this little endeavor and served willingly for several weeks of the California Republic's existence and thereafter served in Captain Fremont's California Battalion in south parts of the territory until the matter was settled and we were released from duty and able to return to our newly saved homelands or homesteads. So I returned to our ranchero near the present day uh, village of Red Bluff in Calusi County, although some want to change the name to Calusa, I don't understand that. I was fortunate to have made a sizable amount of money from my labors in the northern mines after the start of the great 1848 gold rush. I took an active part in the development of that community, serving in several elected and appointed capacities, including as I serve currently as the county judge. Well, that's my tale. Now, I understand that my sons and their families are now planning to go east over the mountains to join Brother Brigham at the Great Salt Lake and add their talents and some of that gold I was talking about into the coffers of this new community there that we call Zion.